In this video, we'll talk about regularization techniques in PyTorch. Regularizations are a bunch of techniques which prevent overfitting and variance when training a machine learning model. In this video, I'll talk about five different regularization techniques that can help reduce overfitting when training a neural network in PyTorch. The notebook that I will use for this video will be available on GitHub and the link will be in the description box below this video. So let's begin. I will quickly go through the first part of this video because I have covered some of this in my earlier videos about creating simple neural networks in PyTorch. We import the relevant libraries, we get the training data in a CSV format, do some pre-processing which includes min-max scalar normalization and finally split the data into training and validation data set. Next we build a model without regularization. In this case, it's a very simple neural network so that we focus on regularization as a concept rather than building a complex neural network. This neural network has just two layers, a linear layer with ReLU as activation function and the output layer has a sigmoid activation function. Next, we define the function to train our model. This function takes the model object and an optional parameter called optimizer. By default, we'll use Adam optimizer with the learning rate of 0.1, but there will be some special circumstances where we might want to pass our own optimizer. And that is why if no optimizer is specified, then we use this default optimizer. The loss function that we'll use is binary cross entropy. We'll train the model for 15 epochs with a batch size of 1000. This loop is responsible for training the data on the training data set and calculating the validation and training loss. Let's look at how the training and validation loss looks like. So it seems like validation loss first reduces and then starts to increase, which indicates that there might be some overfitting happening on this data. So let's figure out how we can reduce this overfitting. The final thing that we need is a function to print the AOC value to see how this model performs on validation data in terms of AOC. Let's get started with the first regularization technique, which is batch normalization. Batch normalization is a technique to improve training stability and speed up convergence. It involves normalizing the inputs to a layer in a neural network. Now, the important thing to note here is that this normalization is performed across a mini batch of data during training. I have provided a couple of links which will take you to PyTorch documentation uh, where we have more details about the normalization layers that we are using for this video. You can refer to these. Let's look at the actual implementation. So the model structure has been modified by adding a batch normalization layer before the activation function. I saw some discussions happening in various forums where people were arguing that batch normalization should happen after the activation function. But leaving that discussion aside, for now I have kept batch normalization layer between the linear layer and the activation function. After defining the model, I have trained the model and printed the AOC value. We can look at the trend of validation loss and it seems like this batch normalization has helped to some extent in preventing the overfitting problems. But of course we can try various other regularization techniques on top of this. The next regularization technique that we'll use is dropout layers. Dropout is a very simple way of adding regularization to your model training. Dropout involves randomly dropping out a fraction of neurons during training. Now the important thing to note here is that dropout happen only during training. During the time of inference, there is no dropout. Looking at the practical implementation of this, we add a dropout layer after our first layer. When defining the dropout layer, we define a p-value of 0.01 this defines the probability of a neuron being dropped out or set to zero, which in my case I've set as 10%. After defining the model structure, I train the model and print the AOC value. Again, I do see some improvement and some reduction in overfitting, but it's probably not the best. We can try out with different p-values to see what works well. The next regularization technique is L2 regularization, which in case of PyTorch is done through a parameter for optimizers called weight decay. The model structure remains the same, but when we are defining the optimizer, we add weight decay as a parameter here. And this optimizer is then passed to our function for training the model. After training the model, we print the AOC value. The fourth regularization technique that we'll use is early stopping. Early stopping is quite intuitive in terms of understanding how this helps in preventing overfitting. Early stopping involves monitoring the performance of the model on a validation set during training and stopping the training process once the performance stops improving or begins to degrade. 
Here again, the model structure remains the same, but what changes is the function that we use for training our neural network. First part of the function is the same, but during the evaluation phase where we are calculating the loss on validation data set, we add a if condition. In my case, I stop training as soon as the validation loss starts to increase. If validation loss is less than the best validation loss or the least validation loss that we have seen, then we continue to train. Essentially, we save the model which has been trained till now because that is probably our best model in terms of our validation loss. But in case the loss on validation data set becomes higher than our best validation loss, then we stop training and load the best model that we have trained till now. Now, instead of doing early stopping, when we see only one instant of validation loss being higher than the best validation loss, we can modify this and monitor the validation loss for few different epochs. If the validation loss continues to increase, then we can stop training and use the best model with the lowest validation loss. But in this case, to keep things simple, I stopped after one instant where validation loss is higher than the best validation loss that we have seen previously. Now let's look at the output. I see that the model has been trained only for four epochs while we have defined number of epochs as 50. And the reason for that is validation loss being the lowest after the third epoch and the model which is trained at this point will be used as the final model. The final regularization technique that I will talk about is data augmentation. Data augmentation is generally used for computer vision applications. Since the example that we're using here is not a computer vision example, I will defer the actual implementation for a future video where we'll talk about image recognition problems. But I wanted to give you a brief idea of how this works. Data augmentation is a regularization technique to artificially increase the size of training data set by applying various transformation to the existing data. The goal is to expose the model to a wide range of variations of input data which helps it become more robust and generalize better to unseen examples. Let's look at the set of images that are displayed on the screen. The credit for this goes to Datacam. So I have provided the link in this notebook. You can see there is a complete guide to data augmentation. You can refer to this to get a better understanding of how data augmentation works for different use cases. So thank you Datacamp for providing this useful guide. Coming back to my notebook, you can see the original image that we have is of this dog, but then there are a set of augmented images, a image which is flipped with changed colors and a rotated image. And the idea is to expose the model to these various variety of modifications to the initial training data set so that it is able to generalize better when it sees new set of images where a dog's orientation or color might be different. Again, go to this data camp link and get to know more about data augmentation. So these are the five regularization techniques that I wanted to share with you in this video. If you found this helpful, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section. Thank you for watching the video.